So I've decided the uh, 1910 Hendy lathe is going to be set up to cut metric gears, but in reading through the literature on how to do that, it turns out that um, it requires a 127 tooth gear in order to be able to cut metric threads with the Hendy lathe. As I mentioned in an earlier video, I don't have an index plate for my dividing head that has 127 holes on it. So I decided the first step would be to figure out the hole pattern in the plates I do have so I can copy that to the new plates. Um, the four hole and the two hole patterns were pretty easy to figure out the radius and determine the pattern. The three hole, I wasn't quite sure how to do it. So I measured the distance between the holes averaged it out and then plotted the three points uh, in an XY coordinate system. I found a little calculator on the internet. You can enter in your uh, X and Y values and it will give you the radius of the circle that fits um, those coordinates. With the whole patterns calculated out, I just needed to measure the radius, which turned out to be exactly eight inches for these uh, plates. With the details of the index plate figured out, I was ready to put the new DRO to work to put those hole patterns in. I then needed to get the rotary table mounted directly under the spindle and used a half inch drill with a uh, number two Morse sleeve which fits the number two taper of the rotary table to get it roughly lined up under the spindle. I then used the coaxial indicator that I got from Shars, pretty reasonably priced actually, to get it as close as I could to uh, centered under the spindle. As you can see I got it to within a little less than a thousandth of an inch run out. Then I mounted the mini pallet, the sacrificial mini pallet I made, onto the rotary table, centered it up using a piece of three quarter inch shaft in the spindle to get it centered under the spindle, and then bolted down the plate so that I was going to use onto the little mini pallet. I then got to use the bolt hole pattern feature on the DRO for the first time, so I had to have the manual in hand to figure out how to program in the pattern that I was looking for. You enter in the radius and then how many holes you're looking for and, and uh, it does the calculations from there. That was the one thing that was holding me up was getting the TRO fully mounted onto the, onto the mill. With the pattern programmed in and just go to the zero out the X and Y on the DRO and you're at the location to drill the holes. I drilled the hole size needed for the particular hole and then went back through on the four outer holes and drilled and tapped for a 1032 bolt in order to uh, maintain the part once I cut the plate free from the outside part of the plate. I wanted, didn't want those to shift around so it bolted on the inside and the outside. I then drilled and bored the center hole in the plate that would fit over the the bore of the dividing head. Uh, just using the Criterion boring head. Picked up off eBay a while back for pretty cheap. I guess the square ones aren't as popular, but they, they have a really good range. So it's a nice unit. Also using the uh, auto feed feature on the vertical head. Use, a, use some telescope gauges to measure the bore to make sure I got it out to the right diameter. Because the K&T dividing head uses two plates that are bolted together, the first plate wasn't going to get any holes in it. That'll be a blank plate I can add holes to later if I need to, but I just needed to cut it out to the right OD to fit onto the dividing head, so I just moved the moved the spindle, the table over, the radius of the plate plus half the diameter of the end mill I was using, and then just began 
cutting out the plate using the rotary table. I'm just using some 5 16 plate. The local steel supplier sells plate cut to various sizes, so I bought some 12 by 12 5 16 plate to use for this. After cutting the first plate free, I went ahead and bolted down the remaining one and then tried out the first one to make sure I'd got the whole patterns to match everything that is uh, they need to match on the dividing head. There's two pins that come out that lock the the plate to the uh, spindle there and it looks like the uh, screws were all in the right place. It's going to be a bolt on, a nice fit on the bore and I just needed to check the uh, OD of the plate to make sure the locking ring that goes around the outside would fit on. So far it looks like everything's in good shape. So now I needed to set up the USB microscope. Um, I'm using it here to, to locate the uh, paper template that I'm going to use. In the description below there's a link to the calculator that you can use to produce those paper templates. Um, once I got it centered I went ahead and stuck it down with some uh, spray adhesive and that template will be my guide for drilling the indexing holes. On my first attempt I put the microscope on the opposite side of the plate from the drill in order to uh, keep it out of the way but for some reason that I still don't understand when I got halfway around as you can see um, I was halfway off on my hole spacing so I had to start to try again. So I'm set up with the microscope looking at the line that's actually going to be drilled. And then I've placed two post-it notes on the computer screen. They're just an app. With, you can get post-it notes. And they're just posted on either side of the uh, line on the template so that I've got a place to index to. You can see I just index to the next line and then drill the hole and repeat that 127 times and I'll have the uh, index plate. Now, this isn't an original idea. Uh, I've seen several YouTube creators who've used the USB microscope to measure out things like this. The first I saw was uh, YouTube creator Zenadu. There's a link in the description below to one of his videos where he showed indexing with the USB microscope and also AVE uh, has shown several videos of using USB microscopes and cell phones for doing somewhat like a CNC type work on a, with manual equipment. And there's a link to one of his videos uh, in the description also. Given the amount of magnification by the USB microscope, you get a high level of precision and accuracy in locating your holes because of that magnification. In talking to some older machinists, apparently microscopes were used a lot for layout work in uh, in the olden days when things were done manually, and uh, this just makes it a little easier. Here's a little shot of the USB microscope. I mounted it onto a magnetic base just with a little uh, stud bolted through. I put a sleeve in the mag base holder and then just used a bolt to hold it all on. Uh, the whole thing was about I think it was $12 on eBay or Amazon. I don't even remember where I got it. You can get them anywhere. They're super cheap. Work very well. After cutting out the 127 holes, which took a while, I uh, needed to cut out the second plate, same diameter as the first one. And again, just using the rotary table and a 5 16 carbide in mill. I was able to cut fairly quickly. It was running the spindle at about a thousand RPM. With the plate cut all the way out I was able to unbolt the various pieces. And now you can see why the I wanted to bolt the inside and the outside because I was afraid when that cut through if anything moved it would make a mess. So uh, the outer piece and the, then just a matter of unbolting the plate itself. 
from the little sacrificial mini palette. I wanted to post this video because I've seen some other YouTube channels where they've made index plates, but typically they use a CNC machine. And since I didn't have access to a CNC machine, I wanted to try this method and see if it would it worked. And you can see my screwed up hole, holes on the outer edge and, and the actual ones on the inner edge. And looks like it worked uh, pretty well. And this could all be laid out without the digital readout. I just had it and was going to install it and thought this would be a good excuse to learn how to use the bolt pattern. Um, all these holes could be laid out and uh, manually picked up. The K&T plates are separated slightly. I'm not, I guess it's because there's holes on both sides. But there's this, so I needed to make a spacer to go between the two plates to space them out the proper amount. So I just turned a spacer down out of a chunk of 12L14. I drilled the three holes for the mounting bolts to hold the two plates together and then realized I need all the holes and so just transfer punched those and drilled them out a little bit oversized so the location of the other holes wasn't as critical. Quick de deburring and wipe down and we've got the spacer plate to hold the two plates proper distance apart. The fit was a little tight so I uh, used the Keith Fenner trick of the little flappy disc, flappy sander, and uh, worked it a little bit till I got the, uh, the three pieces to fit together well enough to go over the bore on the dividing head. So there's a trial fit up of the completed plate. The one thing I'm going to need to do is the pointer on the arm I'm installing there won't fit in the holes. The holes on the existing plates are a larger diameter, but in order to fit 127 holes, I had to go to a smaller uh, drill size, a number 33 drill. So my plan is to make a little sleeve that fits over the end of the existing pointer and, and then have the other end small enough to go into those uh, number 33 size holes. So here's the new plate compared to the old ones. As you can see the holes are bigger and the finish is a little nicer. But I believe the, it should work just fine. So here's some stills of the two plates. I'd made another one for a friend of mine who needed a 127 hole index plate as well. So the first one I made was actually uh, for a friend and it was made out of a piece of half inch plate with the holes only drilled part way in to fit the dividing head that he's got. Um, pretty happy with the way mine turned out. And here's uh, a little footage of the first one I made. Again it's out of a piece of half inch plate with the holes only drilled about 200 thousandths deep. But uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, next step is to make some gears so we can convert the Hendy lathe over to some metric threading capabilities, which would be nice to have. Thanks for stopping by and watching. I hope you in learned something or at least learned how not to do something. And we'll see you on the next video.